I mean, how, how do you guys think you are doing is in that arena of like, this is a terribly divided country. We're not only politicized, a lot of people just hate the other side. And CNN, in my view, should be the place where both sides can watch. How do you think you're doing with that? How is C CNN is the place where both sides can watch. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while since Bill Maher has said anything that I was interested enough in to comment on, but last night he gave me some great A material that you all just have to see for yourself. You might remember a couple weeks ago when Caitlin Collins was on The Colbert Show. I know you guys are objective over there that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> oh, I know, CNN makes a, and I know- Is that this, supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. Um, Good God. God. Well, last night she was on Bill Maher and he actually asked her about this. And the exchange was something that you just have to see for yourself. And then, of course, I'm going to have to give you my two cents. Oh, great. Stick around for that. But first, we're going to take a quick capitalism break with the man, the myth, the legend, Chuck Norris. Have you ever wondered what happened to the legendary Chuck Norris? I definitely have. He's one of my all-time favorites. Well, yesterday, I saw a video that he recently made, and I was shocked. He's in his 80s, and yet he's still kicking butt, staying active, and working out. Honestly, it just makes me feel really bad about my own health. What's even more shocking to me is that in this video, he's talking about how he's stronger, he's working out longer, and he has all this extra energy for his grandkids. As a stay-at-home dad with four kids, this is something I need in my life. He did this by making one change, and he says that he feels like he's in his 50s. His wife started of doing the same thing and she says she's never felt better she says she feels 10 years younger her body looks leaner and she has energy all day again i need this chuck made a special video that explains everything so make sure you watch it by going to chuckdefense.com forward slash drone or by clicking the link below in this video i promise it will change the way you think about your health once again that's chuckdefense.com forward slash drone you can find the link in the description or pinned comment you're not gonna believe how simple this is. Just a reminder, the legendary Chuck Norris is 80 years old and has way more energy than I do. He discovered that he could create dramatic changes in his health by simply focusing on three things that sabotage our bodies as we age. Watch this method by clicking on the link in the description or pinned comment. Thanks a lot. You made press because you were on Stephen Colbert's show and he said something like, um, you guys at CNN just report the news straight and the crowd burst into laughter. <laughs> Look, I'm on CNN now. I guess we're on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they show this show the next night. I don't know yeah. how they, I don't know how we get away with it with all the fucks, but they do. Uh, <laughs> and all these dirty jokes. Uh, but I'm glad. And, I, and I'm a big rooter for CNN. But that tells you a lot, doesn't it? I mean, how, how do you guys think you are doing is in that arena of like, this is a terribly divided country. We're not only politicized, a lot of people just hate the other side. And CNN, in my view, should be the place where both sides can watch. How do you think you're doing with that? How is C CNN is the place where both sides can watch. And, and I think, you know, my show is evidence of that. We have lawmakers on from both parties. We'll have Elizabeth Warren on one, one night. We'll have Ted Cruz on. Uh, another night. I think lawmakers from both parties yeah. should take questions and that you should push both of them. Nonsense, poopy pants! Okay, I gotta quickly stop for a fact check because she makes a lot of completely delusional claims like this. Scanning her videos on YouTube, it's almost all confrontational interviews with Republicans. She mentioned Elizabeth Warren and I couldn't find the whole interview, but here's a quick selection of her questions in this portion. In the Senate, serves with you. He's on the Senate Banking Committee. You two have some common ground actually when it comes to, to reining in credit card fees or big banks and what that looks like with clawbacks for their bonuses. You know, you once told Politico that, that he had been terrific to work with. He was, look, I'll work with anyone. That doesn't mean that I think he should be vice president. Before I let you go, I have to ask, what do you make of when Republicans call, criticize Harris as a DEI hire, but, but J.D. Vance, who has much less experience in, in government, they don't say the same, same about him. Oh, are you asking me the double standard question? Okay, now let's compare her tone and questions during her completely hostile interview with Ted Cruz. This moment, what you said there, you know, you, you talked about your family. They targeted not just your dad, but also your wife. And I think a lot of people sitting at home would say, well, that's pretty cynical. I mean, this is someone who, who attacked the, your own members of your family. And what we learned from this testimony is that not only did Donald Trump know about it, he coordinated it. Do you think of the tactics that he used to get I don't where like he him. was? I can't stand him. 
Do you think he would have been the nominee had he not done stuff like that? I, and you said that Trump didn't know the difference between truth and lies, that he lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. And you said it was straight out of a psychology textbook, that his response to, is, to an accusation is to accuse everyone else of lying. I mean, do you feel differently now? But I, I do want to ask you about the election. You were the first senator to, to object yeah. to, the, to the votes. Mm -hmm. In 2024, will you certify the election results? Do you plan to object, or will you accept the results regardless of who wins the election? Have you ever asked a Democrat that? Of course. What Democrat? But, but what but, Democrats? But, but hold on a second. What Democrats challenge it? What Democrats? Hillary, okay. I know, I know. I, I've been down this road many, many times. But, but, but no Democrat. You cannot compare the two situations. We have talked about that. We've seen the audio of that when but, they protested hey, but, but, on the but, but, Senate hold on a second. Why does every state have laws in place to challenge voter fraud if it occurs? The media Why do you have election challenges? This isn't a game. There was no it widespread is a game. voter it is, fraud. You, you was, only was, ask Republicans that. You, because you ask, it was Republicans well, who tried to block the transition of power. Do Director of CISA said that it was the safest, uh, most legitimate election. So, but in you're United saying States zero history. voter fraud occurred. That's what These you just said. Nothing that would have changed the outcome. Okay, of that but that's election. a different statement. But no, it's not because uh, if yes, it, it wouldn't is. have changed. You the said there was no voter fraud. That's there was the no voter fraud that would have changed the outcome of the election, and you know that, S Senator. S wow, we. You'll see the exact same thing with all the interviews she does with Democrats. It's always a soft, friendly tone that doesn't probe too deeply, and then they quickly move on to bashing Trump and Republicans. So yeah, she may interview both sides but she's clearly a left-wing democrat and treats the sides completely different she's not fooling anyone not bill maher not colbert's left-wing democrat audience yet she continues the act anyway <laughs> crazy but but on the on cnn being a place of credibility i mean look at what just happened in chicago we had 300 people from cnn on the ground covering that convention there were several reporters from just our team alone on the floor uh, bringing it in real time to people. And I think CNN puts resources behind things and just brings a level uh, of news that you don't get anywhere else. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> all you're saying is that Democrats went all out to promote Democrats and campaign for Harris. They were all practically jizzing themselves with glee for the entire week. And, and I think CNN does yeah, a great I'm, job Yeah, but I'm talking that. about the people on CNN and what I, I know what the conservative side of America thinks. And I don't blame them. I watched Kamala's speech last night. It ended at 8.09, well, I guess 11.09 in the East. It wasn't until 11.23 till the, conser the one conservative guy, what's his name? Scott Jennings. This lonely Scott, I call him. David Urban was there too. Wait a second, wait a second. I watched from 8.09 to 8.23, they were just gushing about how great a speech it was. And I think she did fine. I didn't think it was as good as they were making it out to be. But if I'm a conservative in America and I'm watching CNN, just for the straight middle of the road, that's what I hear for 15 minutes is it's great and then Lonely Scott. <laughs> it does look, I mean, and when you see the pat, it does look like tokenism. It's kind of like the same as The View. It's like it's almost better to have nobody there, like MSNBC, than to have this. <laughs> well, I don't think you can, I don't think you can say... I don't think you could say it's better to have nobody there than also lament the fact that you don't think the conservative guy, Scott Jennings, who is great, and, and we have him on my show all the time, spoke up early enough. I, I think it was a Democratic convention. They well, turned to Democrats, people like David Axelrod, who ran successful presidential Democratic campaigns first for, for their analysis of this. And I don't think that you can say that, that CNN is anything but fair. I mean, look at that we covered President Biden's exit from the race very closely, the pressure on him to get out. And I feel like I can speak with authority on this. I'm from Alabama. I'm from a very red state. I have a very conservative family, a lot of them who are Trump voters. They watch my show every night. And, and I think they know that they can, they can trust me, that you know, we call bullshit on every side, not just whatever leaning our, our audience may be. And, and I think that's something that people actually want more of, is to hear from that. I think Scott's voice is really important, but I think other voices are important to hear from. And everyone who, who was speaking last night, it's not like they were all Democrats. I mean, Dana Bash, Jake Tapper, Abby Phillip, all my amazing colleagues. They come across Giving that way. analysis. They come across that way. Fucking A. Seriously, I told you all over a decade ago now that the Democrats on the left thought this way and that it would eventually lead to something very bad. We we're watching it slowly unfold before our eyes. And there's no telling what they'll rationalize as justified as we get closer to November. And even more concerning, after. I don't know. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments. And if you're still here, might as well hit that like button and subscribe. I post on a regular basis, so keep checking back for more. <laughs>